Since 2004, the European Union has been an important donor for African peace and security. It has mainly channeled its funds through the African Union, through a specific fund. But now, this year, in 2021, the EU is introducing new, new ways of funding. This is specifically because it wants to increase its role as a global actor. In Africa also, um, the EU wants to um, get over some of the limitations that it had with previous instruments, where it was not able to fund um, certain uh, military missions that were not um, endorsed by the African Union. So the EU also sees this as an opportunity to strengthen its role as a donor for African peace and security on the continent. While previous EU funding uh, was a specific mechanism for Africa, the new mechanism will be a global fund, meaning an increase in beneficiaries and, po and potentially an increase in competition for funds, which could limit the long-term predictability for funding for African peace and security. There are three main changes. The first change is that the European Union will now no longer necessarily have to channel all its funds through the African Union. So it can be much more flexible in deciding how and where it wants to spend its money. By bypassing the AU and directly funding regional and national military initiatives, the new funding mechanism risks undermining the AU's primacy on the continent in peace and security and limiting its oversight in peace and security operations. It also means that the EU may miss out on the AU's local expertise and experience on the situations and crises it's addressing. The second change is that the EU will also now be able to more directly fund ad hoc military coalitions on the African continent. For example, the multinational joint task force that is fighting Boko Haram in the Lake Chad Basin. When directly funding ad hoc coalitions, the EU needs to ensure it learns from those already present on the ground which have struggled to advance enduring stability, in part due to a lack of overarching political strategy that focuses on addressing the drivers of the conflict. The third change is one of the most significant changes for the European Union, uh, because from now on, the EU will also be able to directly finance military equipment and military training, including arms and ammunition for national armies. On the one hand, the EU sees it as an opportunity to complement some of its activities that is already um, doing on the ground. Um, on the other hand, of course, um, there's a risk that in, uh, in fragile states, the military could also be a cause of instability and uh, the arms and ammunition that is provided by the European Union could fall into wrong hands. While the EU clearly wants to increase flexibility in its funding, it will need help and expertise to ensure its investments don't go awry. Strengthening the AU's role and ability to provide this insight is a promising way to nurture the relationship between the two organizations and plays into the interests of both organizations.